clutch trucker filmed before a live and freshly groomed studio audience. Look at Rusty, the world famous meatball dog. He's got the cute little bandana on. Look, PetSmart in Missoula, Montana. They did a great job. Look at him. Hey, we'll do the full view here. Here's the full, <laughs> the full view. Very nice. All right. See, he's all freshly groomed. And yes, he smells like coconuts. I asked for the coconut smelling dog. Hey, YouTube Clutch Trucker here. Uh, thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Clutch Trucker channel. Okay, I know it's been long awaited. I bought my uh, OTR 1000 about three weeks ago. So today we're going to do the uh, full in-depth review of my Gar Garmin OTR 1000. Uh, and just first off, real brief, I can tell you, yeah, I do like it a lot. It's uh, got some great improvements over the 780, which is the last Garmin GPS I've been running. And I ran that one for about three years. Uh, as I said in my initial video about which to choose between the new Garmin and the new Rand McNally, I went with Garmin because the Rand McNally's just never seemed to last. I never had one last more than a year. So I'm hoping this one will last me a good few years. First off, what do I like about the new Garmin OTR 1000? Well, the size, the 10 inch. Uh, it's my big 10 inch. Ooh, yeah, I like it a lot. Uh, I'm a guy, I want the big one. I want the big one. I want the big one if I can, baby, thank you. So I saved up my uh, TA Ultra One points for quite a few months. I used uh, $450 in points to buy the thing, which covered half of the cost of it and ate up all the tax. All right, so it was a good deal then. I would have paid $400 on a new uh, GPS for cash anyway. So that's how I made it not hurt so bad. It made me hurt so good. Ooh. Uh, anyway, <laughs> John Mellencamp, by the way. He was John Cougar then. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, it's expensive, but uh, in a lot of ways it is worth it. And we're going to dive into all the details, why I like it better over my 780. There's some things I don't like about it. And I've already called Garmin and talked to them. And I, I kept that guy on the phone for like 45 minutes. And I'll tell you more about how maybe you can help make some changes to their uh, next update too. All right. Uh, so like I said, there's some things I don't like about it. Uh, most things I do. And we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison with this one and my Garmin 780. I'll show you how to do uh, things on each one to kind of make uh, the comparison better. And like I say, it's going to be a long video, but we're going to dive into a little bit of everything. I won't do all the settings because um, that's kind of a personal thing. I'm just going to show more how, how to operate it, the uh, new features it has, what makes this one better, uh, why I like it better, uh, and the different screens. This allows you to take screenshots, so I'm going to show a lot of those of places I've been in the last couple of weeks where um, the screenshot shows some of the new 3D terrain, which is really cool. Uh, I never saw the 3D buildings because I, I know it was never right, right down in a big city. But we'll show a whole bunch of this stuff, so strap in and get ready, baby. Okay, for those of you who haven't seen it before, there is my Garmin OTR 1000 mounted up in my windshield. I got my curtains closed. But it is held onto the window with a suction cup, and I have it sitting on my dash shelf. This is my V-Truck dash shelf, which goes all the way over to that side. I love this thing, by the way. I got that in Rainey's Truck Parts, and you can get one, too, for your truck. They make it for Volvos, Peterbilts, um, Freightliners, the Cascadias, uh, the Coronado, uh, or the Columbia, the same dash. So since it is so big and it's expensive, I use the suction cup to hold it up against the window, but I want it sitting on something like my dash shelf so it won't fall off and die on me because I paid so much for it. All right, so there it is. Right now it's showing, uh, if you look up at the top there, it says Nelson Drive is what it wants me to go to. It wants me to go back over here because I initially put in, I was going to the Petro in, um, I think this is called Coldwater where I am, right, I am at right now. Uh, but I decided to come over here and actually stay at the quick trip when I, when I got to the top of the exit ramp where I figured there'd be less trucks, uh, grass for Rusty, and I'd have a quieter night. So that's where I am right now. So it still wants me to finish up and go that last uh, few feet there. Yeah, 0 0.4 miles, but I'm not going to do that. But that's, that's what it's showing right now. There's the local time. You can put uh, different things up into that thing, and we'll get into that a little bit later on, but there's just the overall view. And uh, now we'll dive into some of the features. Now, if you've had one of the Garmin's before, like the 760, 770, 780, uh, this is essentially the same, 
uh, the way you operate it, there's a few little tweaks here and there that make this a little bit different. Like for example, okay, there's just the main screen showing uh, just where I am and where to go. So uh, let me right, out, right now show you one thing I don't like about this that I liked about my 780 and I'll show you uh, when I do the comparison between the two as well. All right, because I did not finish and go to my destination there and I'm over here, what I used to be able to do on my 780 is just uh, hit the top line there and it shows where I'm at, scroll down, and I wanna to go to my next destination, say, right? Okay, I used to be able to just tap on that and then a go button would pop up somewhere and I could hit go and I could move on in my trip. I can't do that with this one. And this is something I called Garmin about. I have to now back out completely and go to my trips, trip planner, to my save trips. Okay, and here's where I'm at. I was gonna to go to that Petro. So now if I wanna start again, I'll have to go up here to go and then choose that next location which would be right there and now say okay and it's going to calculate the route for me it's going to show a preview because there I am up there near St. Cloud and I'm going down here into Illinois so I can hit start Let's drive to highlighted route all right it's asking if I want to skip that I don't know why it's asking me that I'm going to say no all right and if I want to show an overall preview just hit anywhere on the screen Go up here to the little flag thing and it'll again show you kind of that overall preview i use the trip planner a lot and this is one reason i really like the garmin uh, this button was not here initially i was able to move it there from the apps onto my main screen because i use trip planner a lot i have saved trips and i usually do one two three sometimes four different trip uh, combinations because i like to plan ahead and uh, so this is one way to do that because uh, you can see where I started in Missoula, Montana uh, just the other day and I was going to fuel up there at uh, Laurel, Montana, which I did. I got a shower there, then I did a 10 and then I left again last night uh, and I made it to TA Express in Steele, North Dakota and uh, filled up again and then uh, to the Petro, but I'm across this highway here at the Quick Trip. And then I'm going to stop at the Travel Centers of America in the morning, tomorrow morning. Uh, fuel up again because the fuel's cheaper there. And then that's where I deliver. Now here's what I love about uh, this on your trip planner. So you can move these things around. If you just want to highlight on that, you have the up and down. And you can say, I'm going to move that Petro down here. You hold it, you slide it, bang, it's done. You hit save and you're done. I'm not going to save it because I, I don't want to save that. Want to delete it, bang, you hit that. You want to change it to something different you touch that and you can say uh, truck down locations truck stops and it's going to pull up a list of truck stops look here's the map this is another thing i like about the new version uh, before it used to just give you a list now it's giving me a map and see all those numbers on the map they correspond with the numbers over here in the list all right so now let's say uh if i wanted to zoom in on that a little bit i could and I can say, you know what, I think I'm going to stop because there's the little red dots got me where I am. I think maybe I'd rather stop at this one, number two. And it pops up over on the list over here. And I can say, yeah, let's do that one instead. Select. There it goes. It's calculating. And so now it's got that on my list instead of the Petro. It's that easy to change it. That's what I really like about it. What I couldn't figure out on this unit, uh, it took a little while to figure it out, is how to find, like, uh, when I was doing my planning, if I wanted to find a recent destination or a uh, different city. So say I want to go someplace after the TA there, I'm going to add my plus, and I'll say truck down locations, and then I was like, well, how do I find something, there's a truck stop. Okay, it shows me stuff nearby, but what if I want something somewhere else? Uh, you used to be able to uh, just go up there and say, find different city. Well, now, got to hit this one right here. Then it'll pull up that list. And now you can say, yeah, let me find a different city. And you can type it in. 
like I said before, I'm a planner. I plan the crap out of everything every time. And like I say, I, I make one, two, three, sometimes even four different plans, different routes, different ways to go. Uh, and uh, then I can pair mileage uh, and figure out which way I want to go. So this is why I really like the Garmin. It's much easier to do that than with the Rand McNally. Another thing you can do is you can shape your route and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, going back to this trip, the Illinois 2 that we were looking at, uh, let's go up here to the map. And it's gonna show the whole thing. Now, if you wanna shape that route a little bit differently, hit this button up here. That's your shaper. Now it's gonna tell you to touch the map. Okay, we're already here, it knows that, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Okay, oops, I kinda lost where we are. Let me back out a little bit. All right, there we are. Zoom in again. Let's say for some reason, okay, it's got me going around Minneapolis that way, okay? Let's say I wanna go around the bottom. You just touch on it, right there. Okay, and then look at what it does at the bottom there. It says 22 hours, 52 minutes. It's gonna add 12 minutes and it's gonna add 12 miles. It tells you instantly on the bottom the change. Look at the top. This is the old route, the gray route. This is the new route. If you wanna keep that, you say save. If you don't like it, you hit the trash can right here where you hit the uh, change, delete sleep, uh, shaping point. Yep, you're gonna go back to your old route. How easy is that? 780 did that too, it's just a little bit easier to do it now on the new OTR 1000. The shaping feature is a great tool because a lot of times it gives you a, a route maybe going not where you'd wanna go. And you can say, no, I wanna go over here instead. And so, bang, it can pull you a different way. And what I love is how it shows you if it's gonna cost you any more time or miles or either one. Uh, I use that feature a lot. And like I say, that's much easier than the Random McNally where you can just go touch that map and bang, you've got a different route to go on based on what you want to do because you just touched a different location. That shaping feature has been on the Garmin for a few years now and it's a really cool feature. One thing I always do once I'm further into my trip, because you can see I started up here uh, in Missoula, Montana and I went through Billings, there's steel where I filled up and here's where I am now. I always, once I get parked, update my trip. So let's go back to my trip. <clears throat> we back out of the map. All right, here it is. Okay, we're no longer up there. So what I'm gonna do is right here, I'm gonna say, change this to where I am now. Okay, and it shows exactly where I am now on that map, right there, you see? That little flag. I'm gonna say select. Now it's gonna recalculate my route. Of course, now it still has everything else in there. I'm gonna get rid of that. So I've already done that in Laurel, Montana. I just get rid of that, delete your location, yes. Okay, down here, TA Express and Steel, I already did that. Delete location, yes. Okay, Olson's, yeah, we're not doing that. That's the one we added in. I'm gonna get rid of that. Okay, so now I'm down to my final couple of things. I'm gonna stop in Janesville, Wisconsin before I hit my delivery tomorrow morning uh, there at 308 South Division Street in Illinois. So now we're down to that, okay? So now it recalculates everything up there, 388 miles, gonna be just under six hours. We can go look at the map again if we want to for just that section of the route. And again, if you wanna shape it, you could, all right? And now if you're fine with that, we just back out of that again, I can say go. And now it says, okay, do you wanna start at the closest entry point? I never tend to use that. This is a new feature on here. Uh, this is where I wanna go next, to the Travel Centers of America. I hit OK, it calculates really quickly, bang, there it is, it shows you the map overview, which I always like, and then you hit start. One quarter mile, turn right on I-94 East, turn right at the traffic light. All right, and it's already telling you how to go. Now down here in the bottom, you've got your distance, 352 miles to that TA, should arrive in about five hours and six minutes. Over here, you've got your speed, which is not showing anything now. Mile marker not showing anything now, because we're not moving. If you touch on that, by the way, it'll pull up your uh, trip data, which is something else we'll get into. Now, you could pull up trip data on the 780, but it wasn't like this. It would fill the whole screen. Well, initially you could do the trip data, and it would just put three more uh, kind of points of these things on here. Like I say, right now, 
I've got distance to my next via point and the time to there and you can change those just tap on it and you can choose what you want to have in that list okay I like having the next arrival point distance right there and the time there now if you pull up this little window for trip data you notice it just takes a third of the screen up so you can keep that up and I love that about this new unit because before you only had a couple other uh, windows you could put up there if you wanted to see the entire trip data it filled the whole screen and I'll show you that on the comparison I like to keep that up there because I like more information like for one I like the trip data the trip a that's how much I drove today in my 11 hours barely made it here in the 11 hours but you can drive 75 across uh, uh, North Dakota 70 in Montana 70 in Minnesota so I was able to do 801 miles in 11 hours barely trip B I filled up again at uh, Steele North Dakota and I always use trip B for my fueling and the nice thing is with the new OTR 1000 that can always be up there so I can always see hey it's been 331 miles since I fueled up I like to keep uh, the local time up there in that box I like to keep uh, my overall total distance right there 388 352 to that Janesville TA 388 to my total distance I can put the temperature up there this is a new one you couldn't do this on the 780 I have that in there elevation I like to keep that up there too I always like to know how high or low I am and I can keep all that information up there while on the main screen and still not take up too much room and still have a big navigation window to look at if I don't want that there I hit the X it goes away but I like having all of that information handy right up there for me to look at at any time this is a big improvement over the 780 and like I say I'll show the difference when we do the comparisons and again here's what I like about the Garmin's and Garmin's in general is you know any of those boxes you can customize you can touch on that and change it to next stop arrival time to next stop whatever you can scroll down I mean you've got all these options you can put anything you want in there direction elevation time of day trip moving speed trip average speed you know a whole bunch of stuff you can choose from to go in any of these boxes you'd like all right also they've got the up ahead you hit that now it's going to show you what's up ahead top one being truck stops the petros 0.2 miles away there's a way station in 79 miles uh, then uh, there, uh, that's truck parking so it shows the petro again and rest areas okay you touch on any one of those up there it's gonna pull the list up again for you and give you the map this is an added feature from the 780 look it shows you on the map again so maybe you can say hey there's number two right about there I'd like to stop about there touch on that highlights that shows it over here you can say yeah let's just go ahead and go to that and then it pops up you want to start a new route add as add as the next stop add as the last stop you have these options it's really easy to use and intuitive that's what I like about the new OTR 1000 series okay I'm sure you're kind of figuring out my overall theme of this is ease of use customization how you can customize all those buttons it's easy to use and uh, I like how it's arranged okay here we are back on the main screen I hit the up ahead and like I say it is showing the truck stops if I hit the truck stops it gives me the list it gives me the map okay maybe that's not really what I want to see right now oh and the nice thing oh check this out if I scroll down to stuff farther away look the map adapts well now maybe you can say oh I want to go somewhere closer there you can zoom into that map and say hey what was this one over here that was like a 15 or something right there okay you hold, there it is it pulls it up on the left side oh that's a loves sure let's go there and we can say make that the next stop to Love's Tire Care on 220 North Oakwood Street in Oakdale, WI. All right, now it's going to pull up on the right side the total trip, number of stops. Now it's changed my distance down there in the bottom and my arrival time. How easy is that? And you can do it by voice command too. Okay, with the okay. voice command, that's what you used to say on the 780. On this one, you just say, uh, I won't say it yet because it'll it'll listen to me. Let's try it now. Okay, Garmin truck stops en route all right result would you like there it is it pops up truck stops over there on the right side shows the number of the couple of things I'm nearest right now uh, 
you know, and you can pick something down on the, uh, on the list. Let's say you go here and scroll down. And let's say you want to go to that Road Ranger, which is way over, the, way over there. You, so all you have to say now is eight. And it pops that up. At his next stop. To Road Ranger on East Woody Drive in Oakdale, Wisconsin. All right, so there you go. Pretty easy. Let's say I just want to completely switch to a new location. You could even do just an exact address and just say the whole thing all together where you used to have to do it in pieces on the old one. So let's try that out. Okay, Garmin, go to 2001 Division Street, Harvard, Illinois. Found the result. See, there you go. And that little window you see it moving across, it's gonna go ahead and take you there if you'd like. Start new route. To 2001 North Division Street, Harvard, Illinois. And there you go. <laughs> Apparently that place has a truck restriction. Well, I just made up that address, so, you know, that's what you get. Let's say, you know, you're delivering near Indianapolis. Let's try to find a truck stop near that. Okay, Garmin. Truck stops near Indianapolis. Result near Indianapolis, Indiana. Would you like? All right, you see it's showing some list uh, options there. And I can zoom in here if I'd like to see. And look at all those numbers there. See, those are all truck stops. And it corresponds to the list. Let's say, oh, you can say, huh, on this one over here, let's go to that. What's that one right there? 16? The list scrolls down for you. All right. Oh, and there's a Loves right there. Yeah, let's do that Loves. To Loves on Indianapolis Road in Whitestown, Indiana. All right. One now, quarter mile. Turn right on I-94 East. Turn gonna, right at the traffic light. It's going to recalculate. It says there's tolls on that route. You want to avoid them? Yeah, let's avoid the tolls. Now it's going to recalculate that for you. See, it's doing that on the right side. Okay, so there it's showing you right there on the right side. You add 45 minutes, you add 49 miles if you want to avoid the tolls going that route. Well, you know, yeah, and I'd rather not go through Chicago anyway, so I'm going to say go. It's all ready to go. It's got my mileage down there, how long it's going to take. Love it. By the way, I want to show you this. To reset those trip counters uh, on the 780, it was pretty obvious. It took me a while to figure this out. I actually had to Google it to figure out how to do it. Because I'm like, well, how do I reset those trip counters? You know, I, I couldn't get it to work right. Well, what you do is when you're in that trip data screen, touch one of the buttons down here and then go up to the little three or four lines up here. Then it'll say reset fields. You can say yes. Reset overall data, which is your trip A. Trip B, I use that for fuel. So I'm going to say reset. Okay, now I back out of that. And now that trip counter, see, it's up to zero. So that's how you change that. A couple of extra steps based on the 780 that made it a little bit easier. But I love having all the information right there while I'm driving at any given moment. What do I not like about the new, OTR, uh, the new OTR 1000? Well, like I already showed you, a couple extra steps there to reset the trip counters, okay? I don't really like that. Uh, when it pops up for like a way station or a state border on the 780, it would put it on top of where it showed you your next exit or your next uh, turn. This one gives you a separate little bar that's in gray, but it doesn't do the countdown anymore. Like the other one used to do, way station, countdown starting at five miles and count it down. It just says way station. If you tap on that bar, it'll take you to a different screen where it shows you the mileage, but I don't want to have to go to a different screen. So I've already talked to Garmin about that. So that's one thing I don't really like about this one. Also, uh, how I showed you earlier where you can't just move ahead in your trip if you're on a, on a planned trip to the next location if you aren't exactly where it thinks you should be at that location. And my biggest complaint about the uh, OTO 1000, it's not as loud. It's quiet. My 780 is pretty loud. The OTR 1000 is not as loud. Now, part of that may be the voice. The uh, 780 used Samantha, and the OTR 1000 uses Zoe. 
those are the two voices that will speak all the Garmin turns and locations. And I talked to Garmin about this. And apparently, if you go through the Garmin Express uh, app on your computer and hook your uh, GPS unit into it, you can download the Samantha voice to the new OTR 1000. I haven't had a chance to do that yet, but I'm definitely gonna try it. Okay, here's what I've been doing in the meantime is uh, I've been hooking up a Bluetooth speaker. I've got this one right here. I just bought this one the other day. This is the Magnavox. Look at this right here, Magnavox Bluetooth. It's supposed to be like a weatherproof, outdoor waterproof speaker. I just, I wanted one that wouldn't shut off on me. I was initially using my little uh, emoji speaker, uh, which I can plug into a USB so it constantly charges and hooking that up to the Garmin for, uh, so I have a speaker aimed right at me that would be a little bit louder. Problem is, this little emoji speaker shuts itself off every about 10 minutes if it doesn't hear constant audio. So then I bought this with points, by the way, uh, my TA Petro points. Even after buying the uh, GPS, I racked up another 60 points, by the way, in just the last few weeks. So I bought this thing for 25 bucks using points, and it stays on. And I've got it plugged in here in the back with a uh, USB cord so it's constantly charging. And then it's connected via Bluetooth. So now that's aimed right at me. You can see up here over my uh, dash and everything. So that makes it loud enough for while I'm driving down the road because the speaker on the OTR 1000 just is not loud enough. This is a screenshot button. Touch that, it takes a screenshot, okay, and saves it. So I'm going to show you some screenshots of different places I've been in the last couple of weeks that really show like the terrain and everything else that is also an advantage of the new OTR series. At least the 800 and 1000. The 700 I don't think has this. Now to access those screenshots, you go back to the main screen. Uh, and what I love here, oh this is another edition I like. Under where to it shows where I am. Clearwater, Minnesota. 780 didn't do that. There's the map, there's your uh, my service history. This was my complaint about the 780 didn't let me cha uh, save that. Uh, that's another thing I've talked to Garmin about and said, hey, you need to let me download that or export it or something. So hopefully they'll be fixing that. So you go over here to the apps and go to gallery and it'll show you some of the screenshots I've just done. Okay, so see there's a whole bunch of the screenshots of places I've been. And look at some of these, like let's look at this one right here. Come on, there it goes. See how it shows that 3D terrain? This is where, where I was in either Idaho or Montana, or maybe that's Oregon, I-84. Look at that, it shows the uh, 3D terrain of the mountain range. That's pretty cool. And saves everything you did on there. So it, this might be a good option for, if you get into a wreck, save the screenshot so you have proof of where you were exactly. And because it's an Android-based tablet, once you're on the screenshot thing, you can just scroll through the different ones. Look at that. Isn't that cool? There's a shot of just when I was at night, because it's got the dark thing on there, of looking at things. Oh, here's one with weather on it. Look at that. Uh, this is another thing I love about the OTR series. I can pull up a weather map. It only takes a third of the screen. And look, see, that showed when I was near Albuquerque where it was snowing. There's the snow. There's the rain. How cool is that? All right, there's when I'm uh, closer into a city. Oh, here's where it shows up uh, stuff about my, um, if you attach to your smartphone, it'll put up smart notifications right there. Like, look, it tells me that my Illinois Tollway iPass account has replenished. And that pops up, so you can read that. Uh, G, uh, emails and text messages will pop up there on your screen. How cool is that? All right, see, so there's another one with weather. Look, when I was in uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. How about, there's another one neat with, uh, I was north of Harrisburg, showing the terrain, the 3D terrain. So this is how, you know, it's just really cool, the screenshot stuff. Okay, I showed you where uh, it'll put up your notifications on your screen. If you're on the main screen here, you can hit on the uh, notifications once you're connected to your smartphone, and look right down here. See, I can uh, hit this, I can play it, and it'll play it for me. Awards. November fleet points and specials are here. We're thankful for extra savings. To view this email is a web page. Go here. Hi, loyalty ID 7082. Okay, see that's really cool. And when you're on the main screen, let me get back out to it. Okay.
Okay, pull up the main screen again. Come on, main screen, there you go. See, those will pop up over here. If you have an email or a text message, it comes up here and it's big, and you can hit the little play button and it'll play it for you. So you can hear it and you don't have to look at the thing. Again, keeping your eyes on the road, and the Garmin is helping you do that. It's really intuitive. This thing has just got all these extra little bells and whistles. Now the 780 would pop up there with your uh, text messages or your emails as well, but it was smaller and it wouldn't read them uh, quite as much. This one just does a better job about it. It reads more of the message. It shows a bigger area. You can play it and you can play it back again. It's just, again, more intuitive. It's just more useful. Uh, and that's just what I love about the Garmin over the Rand McNally. You can customize it. And it's just more, it's just easier to use. Like with the whole just, okay, Garmin, take me to a truck stop. And it'll do it. And see now it's, it's, it's doing Result it. Result would you like? It's doing it right behind me right now. One. Start new route. To Wilson's Truck Stop, Ambist, on 4101 148th Street Northwest in Clearwater, MN. Pretty simple. Now, like I say, some things I don't like about it, you know, true. And when I talked to Garmin last week, talked to Cade, by the way. Cade, thanks so much for putting up with me. I was on the phone with him, like I say, a long time. Uh, I still, you, you still can't export the service history. And I said, Cade, that's got to change because I lost three years of service history off my old Garmin. And now I've got to pull out all my records to update that into this system. So please make that exportable. So uh, he's, he put a case study on that or a case thing on it. I uh, said the volume isn't loud enough. You know, he put a case thing on that. Uh, uh, another thing I want to show you, the whole North, East, South, West thing that's on the top of the trip data. Let me get into that in a second. Uh, I, I showed you earlier how the turns on your on your trip planner, if you just want to hit go in the list like you could on the 780, you can't on the new one. That needs to be fixed. Because I, I told him, I loved how it could do that. Now, I love all the new features, but don't take away the crap I loved on the old one. Uh, the map icons, I said, this is another thing. Make it more like truck path. Can you show them on the map? That's kind of a general complaint. When you're getting close to your location, it pops up a little window on the right third that says find truck location. I don't like that. I don't want that there. And I said, find a way for me to turn that off. Also, um, like I said, the upcoming uh, way stations and state lines, give me the countdown again like you used to. Again, don't take away something I liked. And um, I asked about the backup camera because there is one available for this unit that's wireless. Problem is, it's only gonna work on like a small box truck. It's not gonna work on a full length trailer because its distance is only good about 45 feet. Now here's one thing I complained about. When you look at the trip data area, okay? Look at the top, you got your trip A and your trip B. Look up there. You got your compass and it says east. And which way is it pointing? To the left. Well, I always learned north east south west never eat someone's watermelon right okay and it's pointing to the wrong direction and i said well what's up with that when i talked to the garmin guy he said actually what it's doing is always showing you where north is so this little arrow there is showing you that that's where north is and it shows you in the middle you're going east but that's north. I'm like, okay, I guess I can buy that. It just seems backwards to me. Okay, now finally I'm gonna pull out my 780 again, plug it back in, and put it right there next to my OTR 1000 and show you the difference and how things look different and why you might wanna to upgrade to the either the OTR 800 or the OTR 1000. So let's do the comparison. Okay, there's the two units side by side. There's the OTR 1000. I said, okay, so now the OTR 1000 thinks I'm asking for a location. Exit. All right, it goes away. And there's the 780. Pull back and look at them. You can see the difference there. <laughs> I keep saying, okay, and so the new unit thinks I keep asking to go somewhere. Well, let's try that. Okay, Garmin, go to Petro.
Which result would you like? Two. Start new route. Go into Nelson's Petro 2 on Highway 24 in Clearwater, Minnesota. All right, let's try that with the 780. Voice command. Say a command. Find truck stops. Find category. Speak a category. Truck stops. Searching for truck stops. Select a line number. Two. Would you like to begin navigation? Yes. Please drive to highlighted route. Okay, you can see the extra steps you have to do on the 780. And here on the OTR 1000, see it shows you that this is that truck, find a truck destination screen that I don't like. And I always X out of that. So I can go back to that menu. Okay, now here's a big difference in the trip data. Here on this one, on the 780, you have your speed down there, just like you do down here on the uh, OTR 1000. Mile marker is down there on the right side. That's next to the speed on the OTR 1000. And you have those two bottom ones you can put right there. I choose via distance and arrival time. Now for the 780, you had to put those up there. So via distance and arrival time and total distance. That's all that would show up on that screen. Now, if I wanted to have my total trip data, I'd hit on tools and hit, uh, where is it? Trip data. Come on. All right, see, I'm too used to the new one now. That's all that shows. If I want to show more of the trip data, I'd have to hit on the speed and see, then it pulls up. There's where you have your trip A and trip B and all that and everything else. But look, it takes up the whole screen. Now you've lost your navigation. Where on this one, on the OTR 1000, okay, your trip data, you hit that right here, it pulls up that screen. There's your trip A, your trip B, and everything else you want, but you still have your navigation. It doesn't kill your whole screen. That's why I like the OTR 1000 over the 780. So you back back out of that, okay, you can see a big difference in the amount of uh, detail, too. There's the 780. And look at the OTR 1000. See, you can see more streets. Everything is more detailed in there. You just get more information. Now, the downside is, listen to this one. In one half mile, turn right on County Route 7 to 5, then take the second right. It's not very loud, but I like how it shows that map over there, too. Now, let's start over on this one and say, okay, where to? And we're going to say recent. And we'll say that Petro. And listen. Please drive to highlighted route. I like that voice better, and it's a little louder. Look at the difference, though, in the detail of the map on the OTR 1000 compared to the 780 very different, isn't it? A lot more information on the OTR 1000. Let's try the voice command again on each one. Say a command. Find category. Speak a category. Truck stop. Searching for truck stops. Select a line number. Okay, so it's just doing stuff nearby. You know, it doesn't give you too much of an option. You can say down down give stuff farther down okay down Alexandria Minnesota the pilot let's, let's say we'll go there three three would you like to begin navigation yes please drive to highlighted route okay so now it does that let's go over here okay Garmin find truck stops Which result would you like? Okay. We were looking for the one in Alexandria, right? So down. Down. Five. Going to Flying J on 45th Avenue North in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay. It's just a lot quicker. A lot more intuitive. Easier to use. 
Okay, I've zoomed out a bit on each screen from where I'm at now. There's the OTR 1000, and now it's compared to being zoomed out on the 780. A lot more detail over here on the OTR 1000. Look at that. There's the 780. Okay, here's something else the OTR 1000 does. See those little purple lines? Like right up along here and over here. This little button right here, you can turn that on or off. This is showing popular truck routes. Routes other truckers have taken who use the Garmin GPS units. So it kind of lets you know whether or not you can run your truck down those routes. Okay, like I said, I spent like 45 minutes on the phone with the Garmin guy, the Garmin support guy, Cade. And I'll let them know there's some things that, you know, you need to upgrade on the new one that I liked on the old one. Uh, so please work on that. And uh, he did say, by the way, if you're going to be buying one of the new units and you call into Garmin, you need to do this, okay? Because if you're like me, you agree it's not loud enough. Call in and say, hey, I need to make a complaint that your new unit is not loud enough. And they will add you to the same case file that I started, okay? And if enough people, you know, complain about that, then they will definitely look into it and change it. That's how we have to make the changes with them. So I've already made the case file for the uh, not loud enough. I made the case file for um, uh, the trip, how we can't advance it like we could on the 780 as easily. Um, I uh, made a case file all about the that fine truck location which I don't want coming up there let me turn that off is all I said okay so uh, mainly call about the uh, not being loud enough and also call about the service history we want to be able to export that add your name to the case file I've already started and hopefully Garmin then will make those changes if enough of us complain and call them and say we want these changes they will make them they said as long as enough of us complain okay I know this was extremely long uh, but I really wanted to show all the features and why I like it like I said I didn't go into the settings uh, there's another guy uh, has got a YouTube channel Charlie I think it's his name I watched his video before I bought mine and he spends about 30 minutes going through all the settings uh, but if you just do a search in uh, YouTube for o Garmin OTR 1000 or Garmin OTR 800, you'll find his video, and he goes through all the settings, okay? I just wanted to go over the overall use of it and why it's better, I think, than the 780 and what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and I think, uh, hopefully, I've covered all of that. I could probably do another 30 minutes on this damn thing, uh, and it's really expensive, 800 bucks for the 1000 600 for the 800 okay but i think both of them are worth it and they offer so many uh new features like the weather you can just throw up there at any time on one third of the screen i love that and it's active it moves it shows the weather moving through uh the 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 feature with the popping up of the um Gmail or the emails and the uh, text messages so you can just have the Garmin play it for you uh, It's all stuff to help you keep driving keep your eyes on the road and give you more information And like I said, I love the new trip data feature where it lets me see all that information and I can customize it uh, I like I love to see the elevation. I love to see how high I am. I love to see uh, the local time um, you know you can customize those buttons and put what you want in there and I just love having more information at a glance and still being able to see the main navigation window the uh, 780 didn't give me that option this new one does that's why I really love the OTR 1000 gives me all the information I want to see my trip data you know, when, how many miles I've gone since I fueled. Like I say, I use the trip A and B that way. Trip A I use for my daily run. Trip B I use for the last time I fueled. So I have all that information right there in front of me while I'm driving 
And that's why I really like the OTR 1000. Now, of course, a lot of people will say, well, you should use a map too, because if you just use the GPS, you can get into trouble. Yes, yes, this is just a tool, drivers, and you should not totally rely on it, because sometimes it's wrong, and sometimes it can't find an address, which bugs me, and I have to go to Google to find it, and then go to my GPS and just kind of do a look at the map and pinpoint it and say, go there. It, like anything else in this business, is a tool. So use it as such, don't solely rely on it. But I think it's a good tool, and if you use it the right way, and use your brain, and still use a map on occasion, I know, crazy concept, I'm a 53 year old guy, old school, and I still, right here, got my Rand McNally map right here. It's like four years old, I need to upgrade. But, you know, all of this is a tool to help you do your job better and treat it as such. Don't rely solely on it. Okay, I hope that uh, helped out and I may have some updates to this video coming up. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, I don't know what else to say right now. Well, I'm sorry this one took me so long to get out. Uh, there's a lot of editing involved in this one. Uh, it's taken me a long time to put this together. I had to do a lot of different you know, screenshots and blah 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 so thanks for your patience on that uh, you know I started editing this when I was up in Minnesota on Sunday uh, at Coldwater Minnesota that quick trip and then I just had to give up I was too tired it had been a long day and so now here it is Monday it's Monday night I delivered in uh, Harvard Illinois I picked up another load in South Beloit Illinois it's supposed to be Beloit Wisconsin and they I had the wrong address but anyway finally picked it up a load of chips going down to Tennessee just north of Nashville so hey if uh, you're in Nashville and you're eating chips in the next week or so you're welcome anyway so I'm finishing editing it tonight and uh, so thanks again for hanging in for that uh, Rusty, Rusty appreciates it right right Rusty mm -hmm. he's still got the bandana on usually these only last about a day or two when I get those at PetSmart but uh, it's still on the reason I get that is because I do the top dog, which gives you the nail grinding. They give the, the the special smell. I get the coconut smelling dog. They do. Uh, they brush his teeth. Uh, they do a special shampoo. They do a little bit extra. I mean, he he has to put up with me in the truck all the time. I give him a little bit of extra pampering when I have him do his thing at PetSmart, right? A stoic look. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate that. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it helped you out and hope maybe you can help you make a decision on the next GPS you might buy. Uh, as always, please subscribe. Uh, would love to kick that up some more. Please comment, I get to your comments. Sometimes it takes a day or two or three because I'm a working truck driver, but I do get to them. Ring the bell for notification. Uh, like, as always, sniff that magic YouTube fairy dust. Clutch and Rusty, out.